In this video, I trained an AI clone of myself to see if it can impersonate me. By training it on all of my past WhatsApp chats, I will then let that AI chat with my friends on WhatsApp who have no idea something like this is happening. To check if the AI can fool them into believing that they are actually talking to the real me. In reality, they are just talking with an AI. Well, the goal of this video is to see if my AI can pass the Turing test. The Turing test was proposed by Alan Turing in the 1950s. It is also known as the imitation game. In this game, a human judge engages in a text-based conversation with both a human and a machine without knowing which is which. The judge asks questions ranging from normal chit chat to complex questions. After some rounds based on the responses, if the judge is unable to distinguish the machine from the human, then the machine is said to have passed the Turing test. Basically, it's a test that measures how indistinguishable a machine can get from a human, potentially showing human-like intelligence. Great. But for this video, I'm putting a fun twist on this Turing test. Instead of an AI trying to imitate just any generic human, I'm going to let it impersonate me. Also, instead of calling it AI each time, let's name this AI Prebot. Prebot will have the exact same writing style, humor, and personality as me. Then I will let Prebot chat with my friends on WhatsApp live in front of you. If it is able to fool them into believing they are actually talking to the real me, then Prebot is considered to have passed the Turing test at least my version of the Turing test. So the first step is to get the data. Alright, so the first step in creating pre-bot is to gather all of my WhatsApp chat history. This is where things start to get interesting because I have years of chat history stored on my WhatsApp. We are talking about personal chats, group chats, everything. To get this data, I will be using WhatsApp's export chat feature. You just go to the chat you want to export, tap on the three dots at the top right corner, select more and then export chat. WhatsApp then lets you choose whether you want to include media or just the text messages. I will stick with just the text messages to keep things simple. And just like that, the chat is exported as a text file. I will then repeat this process for all the chats I want to include in the training dataset. The more data, the better. So as you can see, I have downloaded all the TXT files. That's all I could find, but I think that's plenty amount of data. Just for reference, it's like more than 200k messages. Currently, this data is in completely raw format. I need to do a lot of pre-processing and formatting to make this data ready for the training. So while I am formatting the data set, let me explain exactly how I plan to train Prebot. In the backend, Prebot is going to be a large language model. Think of it like ChatGPT, but not quite the same. ChatGPT, Cloud, Gemini, they are all closed source models. This means we don't have access to their weights and we have to rely on prompt engineering to make them work for our tasks via an API. These are general models that can be helpful for wide range of tasks, but not everything works using prompts, especially what we are trying to do in this video. We need specialized models for that and we will achieve that by doing what all the cool kids are doing nowadays by fine tuning the LLM. For that, we have open weight LLMs like Llama, Mistral, DBRX, Gamma and many more. These LLMs allow us to download their weights and run them on our own computer, meaning we can fine tune them on our own private datasets as well. Now coming to the exciting part, these models are quite generic. For example, they are not good at telling jokes. What I can do is collect a dataset of genuinely good jokes and fine tune the model on that. This will result in a specialized model for jokes. Similarly, we have a dataset of WhatsApp chats where I have been chatting with my friends for over a year. As you might know, I live in India and my native language is Hindi. Most people my age type in something known as Hinglish, a blend of Hindi and English. It's essentially typing in Hindi using English characters, often mixing in English words. This makes it easier to type using English keywords. It will be interesting to see if the LLM can adapt something like this. Okay, so I am done with formatting the dataset. Let me show you how the formatted dataset looks like. I have used HTML tags to format the messages by wrapping each message in specific tags. This way I can clearly define where each message begins and ends. This makes it much easier to control the generation process ensuring that the LLM knows precisely when to start and stop generating text. Now that our dataset is ready, it's time to move on to the next step, fine tuning the large language model. Before we move forward with the video, here's a quick note from our sponsor, On Demand. A platform designed to transform how we interact with language models. On Demand offers a variety of language models available in their playground, including the latest GPT-40. You can even import models directly from Hugging Face. With their plugin marketplace, you can create, publish, and monetize your own plugins. For example, check out the Media Knowledge plugin. 
I will simply enter the link of the latest Fireship video and it will auto detect and start processing the content. You can then ask it anything from the video like what are the new Next.js updates this video talk about and you will get the answer straight from the video showing on demand's rack capabilities. Take a look at some real world examples. Event AI uses various plugins like event searches, trending events and event location to provide comprehensive event management solution or realtel.ai which helps streamline real estate process with plugins for home search, real estate regulation and booking viewings. Creators can publish their own plugins on the marketplace where they can be rewarded for downloads or even charge a premium. You can filter and search for exactly what you need. There is a plugin for every requirement. Plus all of this is available from an API endpoint allowing you to directly integrate on demand into your existing application. On demand is set to revolutionize the language model landscape. Check the link in the description to join the waitlist now. Getting back to the video now. For fine tuning the LLM I have chosen Llama 3 8B which is currently one of the best models out there. We have two options for fine tuning. We can either use RunPod, a cloud GPU provider and fine tune the LLM ourselves or we can use fireworks.ai which is a simpler option fireworks provide a fine tuning service that takes our data as input fine tunes the llm for us and even host the fine tuned llm to save some time i will go ahead with fireworks i use their command line tool to upload my chat data set and with this command i started the fine tuning process i'm a bit nervous about the results but let's see how it turns out regarding the cost fine tuning is quite cheap it's costing me around two dollars for this entire fine tuning while the fine tuning was happening, I created a script to automate the entire chatting process. When I launched the script, it opens WhatsApp Web on Chrome using Selenium. After scanning the QR code, I navigate to the desired chat. The scripts listen for any new incoming messages, and as soon as one arrives, it types hello world. So people can also see the typing thing on the top. Once our fine tuned model is ready, Prebot will take over and handle all the chatting. This entire process of listening for new messages, typing and keeping the history of the chat is completely automated using this python script. So let me run the script and scan the QR code. To start the conversation with Dheeraj, I will send him a hello. As soon as he comes online, I will give full control of the chat to Prebot. He usually comes online pretty fast, so let's wait. Okay, he is online. I will start Prebot now. From here on, all the messages are from Prebot. It responded with just yo. Now Dheeraj is asking if I've read the latest One Piece manga chapter. One Piece is an anime. We usually discuss on WhatsApp when new chapters or episodes drop. Prebot replied with yes, I have read it. For the third message, I have pasted the translation. And it's a bit weird seeing an LLM type in English. It's doing a good job but sometimes messes up words. Then Prebot made two big mistakes of this chat. When Dheera said I enjoyed the chapter a lot and there will be more awesome chapters in the future, Prebot replied with three laughing emojis. Then Dheera said he liked Luffy's attacks and Prebot replied with three smiling devil emojis again. There's nothing funny about these messages and I have no idea why Prebot is using so many emojis because that's not like me at all. I thought this test was going to end before it even properly began. But for some reason, Dheeraj didn't go suspicious and things started to get back on track when Prebot wrote a long paragraph related to One Piece and I think it was awesome. It seemed like Prebot was trying to engage more in the conversation and the message actually made sense. If you watch One Piece, you might even agree. It looks like I am promoting anime but this is seriously what we chat about most of the time. Then Dheeraj asked me, what did you do today? Prebot replied, nothing. And then Dheeraj said, yeah, it's a very boring Sunday today. To which Prebot replied, same year. So far, so good. But then Prebot did it again. It sent laughing emojis three times in a row. This time Dheeraj started to get suspicious and said, how much are you even laughing? But again, the conversation got back on track. They chatted about which anime they are watching other than One Piece. Prebot replied with Demon Slayer, saying it's on the third season and so on. It was looking good. In my opinion, Prebot is doing a great job typing in English. Except for the laughing emoji issue, most of his messages are logical and believable, as if I wrote them. I eventually gave access to Prebot to all of my friends, but this time they knew it's an AI version of myself. They were trying to test it to its limits. There were some bad and completely awesome interactions as well. Here are a few examples. You can pause and take a look. If you want to make an AI clone based on your own WhatsApp chats, I will provide all the source code in GitHub and please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Okay, I will catch up with you in the next video.